Hey, we're back on. Welcome back to The Shimmy Show. I have something really interesting I want to talk about that's interesting to me only, so please, if you care about me, listen to my little story here. I did what they call a FOIA about a little over a year ago, actually, about a year and a half ago. I think it was August or September the previous year. And I just heard back from these people, like, December or whatever, right? A FOIA is what they call Freedom of Information whatever act in America. It allows you to request um, documents about yourself or whatever if, you've, if you're under investigation, shit like that, and, you know... Freedom of information, you, you, can, you can find out whatever case numbers, files, stuff like that, right? So, for those of you that follow my show, you guys know often, well and well, that I constantly reference my personal stalking by the OJJDP ICAC task force in Indian country in America. I've given you guys hours and hours of stories about them. Uh, PDFs, slideshows, witnesses, everything you could possibly think of. Uh, it's a gang of a dozen motherfuckers that literally follow me around the planet. It's very interesting. Federally funded. And the government has now denied their role or existence in any of this stuff to me in their Freedom of Information Request Act. I'm going to actually show it to you guys and uh, read it to you. And there's another part, too, about this that's extra, extra funny to me. Now, for you guys can see this on the camera. Uh, I'm reading this from my email. It's a PDF here. Shimalise McBeb, that's me. Dear Mr. McBeb, this letter is in response to your September 20th, 2019 Freedom of Information Act slash Privacy Act FOIA PA request, which was received in the Office of Justice Programs, Office of the General Counsel on September 23rd, 2019. I actually faxed them from uh, Thailand, Koh Penang Island actually, from a cyber internet cafe or whatever to do this. Uh, Please be advised that a search has been conducted in the OJP and no responsive documents were located, which are responsive to your request. This completes the processing of your request by OJP. You may contact a member of our FOIA staff via email as well our FOIA public liaison for any further assistance and to discuss any aspect of your request. To this address in Washington, D.C. Additionally, you may contact the Office of Government Information Services at the National Archives and Records Administration to inquire about the FOIA mediation services they offer. <laughs> There's some contact information and whatever. So what I gather here is just denial. Pure denial. Government lies and denies. We are not involved yet. I have a copy of their PDF slideshow with me on their little task force handout. If you guys would just be so kindly to Google my shows, look up the show titled B4PP.PDF. Or just go into Google and type in B4PP.PDF. And at the center of this, you will see the next part of my show here. The very man who followed me and stalked me. California to Dominican Republic, here and there all over a girl named Rhina, the 19-year-old Navajo girl from Albuquerque, New Mexico. You followed me around the country, man, and now you have your own YouTube channel where you're reviewing used phones for sale on Woot. As my mama used to say, God don't like no ugly. <laughs> don't care too much for pretty neither, she'd say. <laughs> but God don't like no ugly. <laughs> This man is a failed district attorney, failed lawyer, failed police officer, failed at everything. Now he's selling used phones on Woot and has a YouTube channel. Mr. Dorian A. Peters, I'm referring to your channel. I'm watching it right now. It's very entertaining. So, I hope you're enjoying the United States of America, by the way. 
<laughs> God don't like no ugly. Used phones on Woot. Nice. In other news, 100 quintillion dollars. <laughs> Soon that's going to be the hyperinflation of the U.S. dollar or whatever, right? But 100 quintillion dollars from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. I will personally send this to you as a gift if you can give me information on how to help me with this predicament that I have described. If you or anyone knows about litigation, mitigation, or mediation between myself and the U.S. DOJ, OJJDP, ICAC, in Indian Country, and Dorian A. Peters, California Bar ID number 261863, please entertain me, email me in the comments below, and talk to me, and we can come to some resolution here, because we're all getting old here. You're an old man selling phones on YouTube. You don't have a Poke Bowl restaurant. You don't have any websites. You don't have any condos in Thailand. You don't have any houses. I've looked up your property records and everything, my man. You're failing. You're fucking up. And I tried to put you on. And you're here to entrap me. God don't like no ugly man. God damn. You see? You see why I'm very hesitant to help black people a lot of time? Because black people are government snitches and Uncle Tom's. They will sell you out. This man tried to send me up the fucking river on some trumped up shit over some something he doesn't even know about. All for stars and bars. Black police showing out for the white cop. Wow. The Ethiopian in me could never sell out another brother like that. But black people, African Americans, will sell you out. That's for sure, for sure, for sure. They have that Uncle Tom snitching spirit in it. Africans don't have that. Have you ever noticed that most just Africans in general are merchants? We sell shit everywhere we are. Doesn't matter what the fuck it is. Here, you want to buy this nigga? Every, everything's for sale. You get that? We're sellers, merchants, vendors. We push shit. Even when I was in high school, I sold cassette tapes out of my backpack, you know? CDs and shit, you know? It's like a very... It, more enterprising, I would say. But, I mean, on a, on a trust level, I mean, wow... I'm always caught in the middle of situations like this, you know, being half black, half African, how you say half Ethiopian, half black American, you know, you don't really have full acceptance on either side. And, you know, I don't know who's my brother. And the answer is like fucking no one. Most of the time, you know, you have to treat people on an individual basis. I don't have anybody that actually looks like me other than my kids. I say this all the time. So I don't know where I fit in with this here, you know, but I've been sold out and sold up the river by black folks countless times. God damn. You know, why? Why? I'm not black enough for you niggas? Is that what it is? I'm not, I don't, I don't get, there's, it seems like black, African American, I don't like even saying that word. <laughs> they deny Africa. Black Americans, basically. I like, I like the term black Americans. It's like, what's up? Am I, am I not black enough for y'all? I'm black enough to get pulled over by the police and get discriminated and all the other bullshit. Black enough to have the task force follow me and shit. Black enough for ex all these other problems. I don't, I'm just like, I'm black without the benefits. What, what, I mean, there's got to be an upside, and I'm not getting the upside to it. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the camaraderie or whatever that everybody else on the plantation has, I guess. So this, this is my lifelong story with Negroes like this. What's going on, man? You got a YouTube channel just like me, nigga. I don't know if your ex-videos channel has like 300 million like me, but, you know, keep doing your thing, whatever. I'll be happy to give you some pointers and help you to sell some more used telephones, and maybe you could get a little bit of shine and a couple fans from my channel. I don't know. But you see where you ended up, bro. I tried to show your black ass the way. God, don't like no ugly. So anyway, 100 trillion I'm sorry, 100 quintillion Zimbabwe dollar bill to whoever can help me out and resolve this. You know, money solves everything, and so I accept apologies in cash. This is Shimmy Cash signing out from the Shimmy Show. Peace and hair grease.